Hello everyone. This video will cover a topic from AP Microeconomics Unit 5, Factor Markets or the Markets for Productive Resources. Um, today's lesson is on combining multiple factors of production. Um, we've previously learned in Unit 5 that Uh, to profit maximize a single factor of production, firms will uh, hire until the marginal revenue product or the money brought in by the next unit of a factor of production is equal to the marginal resource cost. Remember that the marginal resource cost will stay level for a firm hiring from a perfectly competitive market because the firm is a wage taker in essence. And the marginal revenue product will fall as the firm increases the amount of that factor of production that it hires due to the law of diminishing marginal returns. I should also say uh, credit to Jacob Clifford of Crash Course Economics for the slides upon which this lesson is based. Uh, so first of all, let's start with the least cost rule for combining resources. This is something that we would use if we do not have uh, information on the price of the product that these factors of production are producing. If we do know how much the product sells for, then we're going to use a different uh, method to figure out how much to hire. So we have the price of the factors of production. You can see uh, over here, a unit of robots is $10, a unit of workers is $5. And how do we decide how many robots versus how many workers to hire? Typically, we should be given the marginal productivity of each factor of production. And if we know then how much each factor of production costs, uh, we can calculate the marginal productivity per dollar for each factor of production. It's very simple. Um, so for uh, robots, we can see the marginal productivity per dollar of the first robot is three. We get that by dividing the 30 uh, units produced by that first robot by the price of the first robot and so on and so on and so on so we can see over here the marginal productivity per dollar of the first worker is four units per dollar the marginal productivity of the uh, per dollar of the second worker is three units per dollar so when we have this data we want to balance the marginal productivity per dollar of each of the two so should we hire more workers? Should we hire fewer robots? Uh, and so on and so on and so on. So the question setup said, if there's $35, you want to, uh, how many of each do you want to hire? Just like when we're maximizing uh, marginal utility or maximizing utility as consumers, we're maximizing productivity per dollar as a firm. We want to look for the one that has the higher productivity per dollar. So first thing we would do is hire a unit of workers. The second thing that we would do is hire a unit of robots. The third thing that we would do, hire a unit of workers. The fourth thing we would do, hire a unit of robots. So uh, how are we doing on our budget? So $5 plus 10 more dollars is 15 plus five more dollars is 20 plus 10 more dollars is 30. And then we're going to hire our last unit of workers for five more dollars for our total budget of $35. So uh, the least cost combination of resources when a budget constraint of $35 is applied to this problem is two units of robots, three units of workers. Now, before we get to that, um, let me cover quickly the way in which you will probably see this problem on an AP exam, either a free response question or a multiple choice question. There are four variables, the marginal productivity of one, uh, the one resource and the price of that same resource, the marginal productivity of another resource, the price of that other resource. If you were combining more than two, by the way, of uh, factors of production, you could just set them all equal. So just an equal ratio of marginal productivity per dollar. Um, you'll remember that the price will stay constant typically in your examples and the marginal productivity will fall as you hire more of that resource and climb as you hire fewer of that resource. Um, most commonly, as I was mentioning on the AP exam, you'll be given three of these pieces of information and asked to solve for the other. So if you have the marginal productivity of both workers and robots from this example, then you might be given the price of a unit of robots and set up with the firm is uh, hiring the 
least costly combination of products and then you'll be left to find okay so what is the price per dollar uh the price of workers in this particular example. So we'll go through a few guided practice examples with that. Now, before we get on to the guided practice, let's take a look at what we will do if we know the price of the product that these things are producing. If we know the price of the product and not just the how much it costs to hire it in the factor market, but the price of the product in the product market, then we can profit maximize our combination of resources. And that's where we take the marginal revenue product and the marginal resource cost of each factor of production and essentially set them equal to each other. So the ratio of marginal revenue product to marginal resource cost for each of the factors of production should be set equal and we can express that algebraically like this. The marginal revenue product over the marginal resource cost should be equal to one, should be equal to all of the other marginal revenue product over, over marginal resource costs of all of the other factors of production. So Let's take a look at this example. If we have our marginal revenue product of labor and our price of labor, our marginal uh, revenue product of capital and our price of capital. So if each of these firms are going to be profit maximizing, what should the firm do? Hire more labor, hire more capital, hire less labor, hire less capital, or stay put. So remember, we want all of these things to be equal to each other and equal to one. So in our first example, the firm's marginal revenue product of labor is 15, but the price of labor is only six. In this case, the firm should hire more labor because the marginal revenue product needs to come down to meet the price of labor. Um, this firm you can assume is hiring and all these firms are hiring from perfectly competitive markets for both labor and capital. So no more, how, matter how much labor is hired, the price of labor will stay consistent at six. Um, in the first example, the price of capital and the marginal revenue product of capital are already balanced, so that firm will stay put. You can pause this video now to work the rest of these problems before I put the answers up. And here are the answers to the rest of the practice items on this page. Here's another practice problem from an AP test a number of years ago. This is the John Lamb Company. Pause it again to work through this example. All right, now that you've worked through the example, let's take a look at the scoring guide. Uh, first of all, for part A, you'll see the, oops, Daisy. You will see the graphs with the market graph on the left a regular old supply and demand market graph with the price set by the market. That price translates over to John Lamb. You'll see John Lamb with a perfectly flat level, a perfectly elastic supply for machine hours. Um, that indicates that John Lamb's a price taker in the machine hours market. And then you'll also see the marginal revenue product of machines falling. And that's because the machine hours experience a diminishing marginal returns. Uh, so set your graph up like that to earn those two points. Um, assume the popularity of widgets declines, decreasing the demand for widgets. What will happen to each of the following? You're going to get a point for saying that the marginal product curve for machine hours does not change. Demand for widgets that the machines make doesn't change the productivity of the machines, but it does change the marginal revenue product for machine hours because the marginal revenue product, remember, is the price of the widgets um, factored into the productivity of the machine hours. Um, part C down there is, and I'll show you the scoring guide for part B. There's a scoring guide for part B. Uh, the part C question is the least cost combination that we spoke about earlier. So John Lamb is employing the cost minimizing combination of inputs. The marginal product of labor is 28 per worker hour and the wage rate is 14. The marginal product of machine is uh, 60 widgets per machine hour. What's the hourly rental price of a machine? Uh, so here we simply take 28 divided by 14 equal to 60 divided by uh, the unknown variable. So in that case, 28 over 14 equals two. So 60 over 30 should also equal two. And that is what we get. Therefore, 30 is the price of machines per rental hour. All right. Thank you very much and look forward to more videos in the future on Unit 5 as well as some other review stuff for our upcoming AP Microeconomics test. Thanks. Bye-bye.